Amen. My opening scripture is found in Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we approach you, Father. Once again, come to say thank you, thank you, thank you for another day of life, Father, for all that you continue to do, Father. So many didn't get this opportunity, Father, but you blessed us once again, Father, and we thank you right now, Father. We thank you right now. Father, we thank you for the activity of our limbs, Father. So many can't walk, but we're able to walk. So many don't have a voice, but we're able to talk. So many can't see, but we're able to see, Father. So yeah. many can't hear, but we're able to hear, Father. Yes. We just thank you, thank you, thank you for the activity of our limbs. We don't take for granted, Father, how you continue to bless us, Father. Father, we just want to lift you up, give you glory, honor, and praise, Father. Father, we ask that you forgive us right now, Father, of all of our sins, all those things we thought, said, and did, didn't bring glory and honor to your name, but hurtful to others, Father. Forgive us right now, Father. Help us to repent and turn from our evil ways, Father. We thank you for your undeserved grace and mercy, Father. Father, as you freely forgive us, help us to forgive those that have hurt us, Father, those that have betrayed our trust, those that have intentionally set out to do us harm, Father. Help us to find that place in our heart where we can forgive them also, Father. Help us to move, move past the resentment, move past the anger, remove, move past the pain, Father. Help us right now, Father, to offer up prayers on the behalf of those people, Father. Father, we ask that you continue to watch over those that are backsliders, Father. Well, bring them back into your fold, Father. Touch them right now, Father. Give them a desire, Father, to once again serve you once again, Father. Touch right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, send one of your angels to minister to those backsliders, Father. Touch them right now. Oh, Father, you have a work for them to do, Father. Bless right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, we just thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Father, we're praying for those families down in Sacramento, Father. So many people lost their lives, Father. Oh, Father, you only know the, the extent of the hurt and pain that those families are going through, Father. But you are a comforter, Father. You are a way maker, Father. Comfort those families right now, Father, in this difficult time, Father. Father, so many are in the hospital fighting for their lives, Father. Heal their bodies right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Bring peace into that community, Father. Do it right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, continue to watch over baby Yum Yum, Father. You know exactly what it is she's going through, Father. Bless her right now, Father. Keep her right now. Strengthen her mom, Father. Strengthen her grandmother. Strengthen her great-grandmother. Father, bless her right now, Father. Continue to bless Sister Tanisha Askew, Father. Continue to give her strength, Father. Continue to increase her faith and trust in you, Father. In the midst of all that we go through, in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our tribulations, we will continue to give you glory, honor, and praise, Father. All that we go through, Father, is meant to draw us closer to you, Father. And we thank you for our trials. We thank you for our tribulation, Father. Because it's all working for our good, Father. We just give you glory, honor, and praise right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Watch over that Carlson family, Father, that lost their son on yesterday in San Francisco, Father. Oh, bless them right now, Father. Oh, touch those parents right now, Father. Oh, it's a difficult thing when parents lose their children, Father. Oh, but comfort them right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, we ask that you continue to watch over those that are less fortunate than us, Father. Those homeless men, women, and children, Father, that are living on the street, Father. We ask that you touch them right now. Continue to provide them with what they need. Not all of them are alcoholics. Not all of them are drug addicts, Father. Some of them just can't re meet, meet the financial obligations of this day, Father. But these are yet still your children. Your desires that each and every one of them be saved, Father. Yes. Help us to have more compassion, more love, more empathy for them, Father. Yes. Oh, when we run across them, Father, help us to speak life into them, Father. Oh, touch us right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. 
Father, continue to watch over those ministers and those elders that continue to serve, Father, under their pastors, Father. Bless them right now, Father, yes, for their sacrifices that they make, Father. Bless their wives, Father, yes. for willing to stand by their sides, Father. Only yes. you know what they go through, Father. Only you know the times when the tears are flowing, Father. Give them strength right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Continue to encourage them, Father. Give them faith right now, Father. Yes. Continue to light a fire underneath them, Father. Just do the work that you called them to do, Father. Oh, Father, continue to bless them right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, we just ask you right now, Father, that you light a fire under all of us, Father. Help us to, to be the saints that you called us to do, be, Father. You've given us all the assignment, Father. Oh, give us more passion, more fire, more, more zeal, Father, for serving you, Father. Give put a yes down in our soul, Father. Yes to do your will. Yes to do what you called us to do, Father. Help us right now, Father, to stop making excuses about why we can't do what you called us to do, Father. But to press forward, Father, believing in you, Father, that you're going to make ways out of no way, Father, that you're going to equip us with what we need in order to carry out the assignment that you've given us, Father. Oh, Father, you said the harvest is great, but the laborers are few, Father. Send out laborers, Father, those willing workers, Father, that are willing, Father, to go out and reach those lost souls, Father. Do it right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, we just ask that you touch Mother Gibbons on today, Father, that you touch her in her body, Father. You know the pain that she's going through, Father. Touch her right now. Nothing is too hard for you, Father. Make ways out of no way, Father. Continue to watch over our district missionary Barker, Father. Continue to heal her in her body, Father. Oh, continue to raise her up, Father. In the midst of all that she goes through, Father. She continues yes, to press her way forward. Continue to do the work that you called her to do, Father. Yes, what an example she is to women all over, Father. Yes. Bless her right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, continue to watch over the speaker on today, Father. Watch over the, the this, Deaconess Williams, Father, and Elder Williams, Father, bless them right now. Continue to bless their ministry, Father. Yes, Continue Lord. to bless their marriage, Father. Continue yes, to Lord. give them the desires of their heart, Father. Yes, oh, Father, yes, give Lord. her what to say and how to say it when it comes to delivering her message on today. So let yes, it be an encouragement to your people on today, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, continue to watch over our pastor and our first lady, Father. Continue to bless and encourage them, Father. Surround them with men and women, Father. That will help them carry out the vision that you've given to them, Father. Save their children, Father. Save keep Eric and Brianna, Father. Save, set free, and deliver, Father. Oh, Father, send one of your angels to minister to their children, Father. So many times our, our children will listen to somebody else before they listen to us, Father. Oh, let this be the year that they say, yes, I want to give my life to you, Father. Oh, touch them right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, we ask that you walk over the mothers of the church, Father, those the elderly, Father, those that continue to press their way, Father. Oh, we ask that you strengthen them in their body, Father. Continue to give them the desires of their heart. Continue to give them a quality of life that only you can provide, Father. Do it right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, we just thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Continue to right now, Father, to watch over our bishop, Father. Watch over Bishop Macklin, Father, bless him right now, Father. Watch yes. over First Lady Macklin, Father. Continue yes, to bless him right now, Father. Watch Amen. over their children, their grandchildren, Father. Watch over the elders in the Sweet Unity District, Father. Bless them right now, yes. Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, and we just thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done and continue to do, Father. We're going to continue to give you glory, honor, and praise, Father. We thank you for everybody that's on this prayer line, Father, for all those that's willing to intercede on behalf of others, Father. Not thinking about themselves, but thinking about others, Father. Bless them for their sacrifice, Father, yes. for their willingness, Father to come on and set out time for you, Father. Father, and we just thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done and continue to do. And we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Deaconess oh, Mothers, go right ahead. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for today. A day we'd never seen before, Lord. Another chance to get it right in your sight, Lord. Another chance to be a better us, Lord. 
Lord, we thank you for this day because you woke us up this morning, Lord, in our right mind, Lord, giving us a mind and a will to serve you, giving us a mind and a will to run on and see what the end's going to be, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the activity of our limbs today. We thank you for our vision. We thank you for our feelings. We thank you for being able to touch, see, taste, and feel, to hear, Lord, all those things, to speak, Lord, freely. We thank you for the freedom that we have in you, Lord. We thank you that we're free to worship you in spirit and truth everywhere we go. We don't have to put any bars around us or get in any boxes and hide. Lord, we can just freely praise you driving in our car, walking down the street, riding our bikes, riding our scooters, whatever we ride in, Lord, we can praise you with all that we have. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of any unrighteousness that we've done in your sight, Lord. We know whether we've done wrong or right. You know whether we've done wrong or right, Lord. So forgive us, Lord, in all ways, Lord. Give us the strength to do better. Lord, let us be better better, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord, as pastor said, get in alignment with our kingdom assignment, Lord. We know what we need to do, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for leading, guiding, and protecting us along our way, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for looking down on all the elders at Solid Rock. Look down on their wives, Lord. Look down on their entire families. Look down on Elder Lambert and his wife and his father and his children, Lord, that he cares for, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in that family. Look down on the Smiths, Lord. Bless them with everything that they need, Lord, to abide in you. Bless them in a special way, Lord, that they may be in alignment, Lord. Bless them in a way that they continue to give, 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 give. Let her be by his side and strengthen her as she is, Lord. Let them continue to walk upright in your statues, Lord. Thank you for looking down on the ivories. Bless them as they vacation, Lord. Put a hand of protection around them. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come their way, Lord. Watch over them. Watch over their children while they're gone. Watch over their little... Um, Goddaughter, um, Patricia, bless her. Bless her in a special way. Look down on Courtney, especially, Lord. Just look down on their entire family, Lord. Look down on Elder Moore and Missionary Moore. Oh, God, bless them and their children. Bless Mariah and her babies. Bless Lexi and her children, Lord. Oh, God, you know, bless Larry. Bless Elizabeth and her family, Lord. Bless each and every one in their family, Lord. You know all about it. You know everything about them. Lord, we're asking a special blessing for our elder keys, Lord, that you watch over the young man of God. Lord, that you anoint him for a time such as this, Lord, so that he may come back stronger than ever, Lord. You know all about it. You know everything. You you know, everything that he's going through, Lord, you can touch him and lift him up and roll him right on out to where he needs to be, Lord. You know everything that needs to happen in that young man's life. Oh, God, look down on the elders in our district, Lord. Look down on them, Lord. Look down on the ministers. Look down on Minister Green having a procedure today, Lord. Bless him in a special way. Heal him. Take care of him. Look down on our minister Cephas, I believe. Lord, look down on him. Oh, God, you know all about it. You know everything that we need at Solid Rock. Even look down on Pastor Rivera and his congregation, Lord. God, you know everything about it, Lord. You know all that he needs. You provide for him. Look down on our own Deacon Burnett and Missionary Burnett, Lord. Look down on our pastor, but most of all, look down on his family. Look down on his children, his siblings. He's the head of all of them, Lord, and he's taking care of them, too. Looking out for them day by day, all the time. Looking out for them, looking out for us, looking out out for everybody. Same thing with our first lady. Bless her in a special way. Lord, would you please give them the desires of their heart. Give them a faithful, 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 faithful church that's going to follow them no matter where. Lord, as long as they're going right, we're going to go right with them. We're going to be marching. We're in the army of the Lord, marching with our pastor and first lady. Whatever they need, Lord, let us not say, well, maybe, but let us say, yes, 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 yes. I'll do whatever you ask of me, pastor. Yes, first lady, I'll do my best. Oh, and if we can't do it, Lord, there's no way, there's no reason why we can't do it. But if we can't, Lord, just help us to do better, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for how you wake me up every morning, how you give me the desires of my heart, how you bless me with the ability to pay my bills. Lord, all of us are on here. We have electricity. We have cell phones. We have light, gas, water. We have cars. We have gas to put in them all. Thank you, Jesus, for the gas. Lord, thank you for all those things. Didn't hear about any bad news last night. So, Lord, I'm thankful. 
thanking you for each and every member of our families, Lord, for our children and our loved ones, Lord, that you continue to watch over them, that you continue to bless them, that you continue to save, set free, and deliver our children, Lord, our children, our children, our children. Some of us have old children, 55 years old, Lord. Bless them in a special way. Bless their children and bless their children's children, Lord. You know all about everything that they're going through, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for looking down on Tanisha and her family, Lord. Thank you for looking down on Duda. Thank you for looking down on Nunu. Thank you for looking down on Aaliyah and Marcus, Lord. And look down on baby Yum Yum, Lord, and bless her in a special way. We're looking for a miracle, Lord. We pray for baby Nova, and God, you, you made it happen. And you'll make it happen for baby Yum Yum, Lord. You are good, God. You are understanding miracle work in God. Nothing's too difficult for you to do. In you, we live, move, and have our being. And we're standing on your word, Lord, that you will take care of every need that we have according to your riches and glory. Look down on Mother Gibbons, a very, very faithful woman of God. Oh, God, bless Mother Gibbons in a special way, Lord. You know all about her needs. You provide for her according to your riches and glory. We're just thanking you for how you look down on her all the time, Lord, how you continue to bless her in her mind and her heart and her spirit, Lord. Brother Solomon is asking for prayer for his church in Missouri, Grace Baptist Church. We're praying for that church. We're praying for our own brother Solomon, Lord, who's faithful, faithful, faithful to this prayer line, Lord. You know all about it. I ask you to look down on each and every one of us as we go to and from. Show us your grace and your mercy that are new every single day. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the encouragement we have from one another, that we will encourage one another. Lord, we thank you for a spirit of forgiveness. If we have any odds against someone, Lord, let us forgive them. Truly forgive them, Lord. Not just say it out our mouth, but mean it in our heart. Heart, Lord. Oh, I thank you for salvation, mercy, and grace today, Lord. I thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord. I thank you for shelter. I thank you for everything. I thank you for love. I thank you for compassion. I thank you for empathy, Lord. I thank you for my finances, Lord. I thank you for everything. I thank you for the kindness that has been shown to me by everyone. Lord, people have been so kind to me. Lord, I didn't deserve it, but you made it happen for me anyway. Lord, I just ask you to increase our faith on today. Let us be better, better, better. Grow, grow, grow. Increase, 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 Lord. I thank more. I thank you for more of you and less of us, Lord. More selflessness instead of selfishness, Lord. You're such a great God. You can provide for us with all those things, Lord, and we're just grateful that you've given us victory over sin and shame. We don't have to worry about that. That kind of stuff. Oh, Lord, you've been so good. Let us be in service, Lord, for you. Let us be marching soldiers in the army of the Lord. I love that song. We are soldiers because sometimes we do have to fight and sometimes we got to cry, but we got to hold up the bloodstained banner and hold it high. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for looking down on those in prison. Thank you for looking down on their families that are providing for them, Lord. Thank you for those that are in the county jail fighting for their life, going to trial for all kinds of crimes, Lord. Bless them in a special way, but most of all, Lord, let them accept you as their personal savior, and then they don't have to worry. They may do life in prison, but they got you to walk them through it, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, and those of us that are going through anxiety today, that are anxious or worried about something, remove that. That's an absence of faith. We want to keep the faith going. So remove that. Give us joy, joy, joy to replace that. Oh, Lord, let us be true to our word. Let us not be hypocrites in you, Lord. Let us not say one thing and do another, but let us walk upright, talk right, do right. And Lord, have your way in our lives today, Lord. I thank you for looking down on Nisi Miles, who has brain cancer, Lord. I know that you can take care of her. You can take care of her husband. You can soothe their broken hearts, Lord. It might not be that long. Look down on my daughter-in-law, Malika, who's about to deliver at any time, Lord, who's facing some preeclampsia, Lord. You know all about the situation and circumstance. Thank you for looking down on my sons. Thank you for blessing them and keeping them. Thank you for looking down on each and every one at Solid Rock, the mothers, the sisters, the deacons, the deaconess, each and every member, Lord. No titles, no matter what. Anybody that belongs to Solid Rock belongs to you, Lord. And Father God, I'm just thanking you and praising you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. Reach out and touch somebody today, saints. Reach out and text somebody today, saints. Reach out and love on somebody today, saints. Pick up that $500 pound phone and ask them to just speak to you today. Just call somebody you haven't talked to in a long time or that you just know need some love. Everybody needs some love today. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Glory and honor belongs to you. We want to serve you, Lord. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God deserves all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give praise and thank God for the prayer that went forth. Amen. We just thank God for our first lady coming um joining on today. And we will give it over to her to have expressions and introduce our speaker on today. Amen. We praise God. We're not gonna hold you too long. Amen. So first lady, it is in your hands. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we just thank God for everybody that's on. We love you and we appreciate you so much. We are so glad that Sister Deaconess Williams accepted um, the invitation. Amen. We, we love you so much. and We appreciate you. Amen. Praise God. First Lady, it's in your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank God for being here today. What an honor. Yes. You know, I just want to tell um, my deacon, Deacon Burnett, you, you know what? You are a powerful, powerful, powerful prayer man. You hear me? And I just want to tell you that. So don't make yourself seem small. Don't make yourself seem little because every time you pray, you touch my heart. There is nothing that you do not miss. I thank God for you. He has put you just where you need to be. You are, <clears throat> I know your wife is carrying this and doing it for you, but when you come in, hallelujah. I just want you to know that. Amen. Amen. Give honor to God. It's truly the light of my life today. I just thank God for this opportunity to be here for my baby. Amen. My baby ain't no secret about it. I ain't gonna tell nobody I don't know because she's my baby. Even when I ain't around, you know, people may say, that's my baby, you know, because she looks like me. God has already done it. Oh, I can't, I mean, without Marcus, I mean, I'm sorry, Elder Marcus, that's my son too. Amen. Without him, I, I just don't know what we would do, amen? So I thank him for being present online today. He is such a big one. When God put them two together, my God, my God, they are the most lovingest, kindest people that I know. And you know what, what I love about them most of all? Some people can say, well, I'm going to do this for you, 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 you. They don't have no limitations. If they see a need and they know you and they love you, they are going to reach out to you. And I thank God for that. Amen. I can go on and on talking about Shalice and Marcus, but I know I can't do that today. But I'm just I'm so honored that she's here to speak. I know God has given her a powerful word today. I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say. And I'm not going to say any more because all I can say is like, this is, she didn't come for me biologically, but this is my baby. Amen. I thank her. Even when she moved to Texas, she, we, she stayed in touch. She always called. She touched bases. It just touches my heart with love that she has for people. Amen. So I pray and I don't care who she got love for. I'm number one, y'all keep that in mind, okay? I'm one, I'm one. She can let everybody else, Marcus, I'm one, know that. <laughs> and I just want to say how much I appreciate you guys. I'm looking forward from hearing to you, hearing from you. And I'm pretty sure Pastor has something that he wants to say too, but I'm praying for you, my love. And I know you're going to do an awesome job. And I'm looking forward to the word, amen? Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so glad to be here on this afternoon. I thank God for Dad Simpkins, Superintendent J.K. Simpkins Sr. I love and honor both of them. And to Lady Simpkins, the jewel of the rock. And to this dynamic prayer team, we appreciate you all. And to my covering and my priest of my home, the elder Marcus Williams, and to my pastor and prelate, Bishop J.W. Macklin and Lady Macklin. Thank you all for the opportunity to come and encourage your heart this afternoon. As, as Lady Simpkins said, we are family and family we are. And so whenever anybody calls me from Solid Rock, I am on my way. I will set aside some time. And I must say that this example of loving God's people, I had two and still have two great examples. And that is Superintendent Simpkins and Lady Simpkins. It is through them that Elder Marcus and I learned how to love God's people, how to share with God's people. So we love them, we appreciate them. They are our accountability parents. They help us, they guide us, 
And most of all, they protect us. And that we give God praise. We give God praise for them. And it's nothing wrong with that. So with that said, in the sake of time, Father, thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people. Let the words of my heart and the meditation of my mind be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. So you all pray with me. I'm a little nervous today, but you pray for me. As Sister Missionary Queen asked me on Saturday, I began to seek the Lord on what would you have me say? And he told me to tell the saints to go to 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25, and then we'll touch on Psalms 51. And I know we are encouraging the elders and minister's wife, but the word is the word for everybody. Amen? Amen. And so one of, one of my favorite women of the word is Sister Abigail. Sister Abigail, Sister Abigail, she, she, she changed her community. So we'll start off with verse number one, and I'll come in and, and give you some backstories again for the sake of time. And I'll use the, the new international version because it's easier to understand. Now Samuel died and all of Israel gathered for his funeral. They buried him in the house of Ramah. Then David moved down to the wilderness of Mohan. And there was a wealthy man from Mohan who owned property near the town of Carmel. Not our Carmel, but Carmel. He had 3,000 sheep, 1,000 goats, and it was shearing time. This man's name was Nabal and his wife, Abigail. And Abigail was sensible and beautiful and a descendant of Caleb. But Nabal, he was cruel and a mean man in all of his dealings. And so saints, he should have known better because he had come from Caleb's descendant. He should have known better. When David heard that Nabal was shearing his sheep, he sent 10 of his young men to Carmel with his mess for a message for Nabal. And as the men approached Nabal, they said to him, peace and prosperity to you and your family and everything you own. I am told that it is sheep shearing time. Well, your shepherds stay among us near Carmel we will never harm them and nothing will be ever stolen from them. Ask your men and they will tell you that this is true. So would you be kind to us? I'm gonna say that one more time. So would you be kind to us? I don't know saints that word kind seems to slip from our, our characteristic as saints but I'm gonna go back. So would you be kind to us since we have come at a time of celebration? Please share any provisions you may have on hand with us and with your friend, David. And David Young's men gave the message to Nabal in David's name and they waited for a reply. And here's Nabal, bless his heart, bless his heart. Who is this fellow David? Nabal sneered to the young man. Who does this son of Jesse think he is? There are lots of servants these days who run from their masters. Should I take bread and my water and my meat that I've slaughtered for shears to give it to a band of outlaws who come from who knows where? So David's young men returned and told him, what Nabal had said. And if I could give you a topic for the text as I continue to read, repentance, wisdom, praise and worship will bring about a change in your life. Now, as the backstory is that we can see, here was Nabal, he was a very wealthy man. He had a wife called Abigail. Abigail had lots of wisdom. She had good sense. And she was very beautiful. But Nabal, old brother Nabal, 
So what had happened, if I could give you the backstory, David's men had been sharing with Nabal. They were shearing sheep together, but David's men were protecting Nabal. They were protecting his men as they were shearing sheep together. But because it was celebration, guess what David did? He could have just bum rushed him he, because he had the power to do it. He had the manpower to do it, but he wanted to be in decent and in order. So he sent 10 young men to Nabal to ask him to provide provision for him because he had already provided provision and protection to his men as they had been sharing sheep together. Now here's where the story takes a turn. Here's where the story is taking a turn. So David's young men returned and told him what Nabal had said. And this upset David, because David remembered that I protected you. I had a covenant with you. I protected your men that would add to your bountiful blessings as we were sharing the sheep together. No harm came to you. So David said to his men, get your swords, was David's reply as he strapped on his own. Then 400 men started off with David. 200 remained to guard their equipment. Can y'all say David was mad and he was not playing with Nabal? Meanwhile, Nabal's servant went to Abigail. That's the woman with good sense and wisdom. They went to her and said, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our masters, but he screamed insults at them. And these men have been very good to us. We never suffered any harm from them. Nothing was stolen from us the whole time they were with us. And as, as we think about this scripture, remember those who support you. Remember those who have helped you. Don't burn bridges. And as Bishop always says, as you are climbing the ladder, don't remember those who lifted you and kept you from falling because on your way down, you will surely pass them up. So remember those who have helped you. And in fact, day and night, they were a wall of protection to us and the sheep. So as David, as David and his men, he's telling them, we protected you and your sheep, that you were able to increase your wealth. You need to know this and figure out what to do. This is what Nabal's men are telling Abigail. You need to know, Sister Abigail, to figure this out on what to do, for there is going to be trouble for our master and his whole family. He is so ill-tempered that no one can even talk to him. Can we say foolish? Nabal was a foolish man. But Abigail, in her infinite wisdom and her good sense, Abigail wasted no time. She gathered 200 loaves of bread, two wineskins full of wine, five sheep that had been slaughtered, and nearly a bushel, a ro roasted grain, a hundred clusters of raisin, 200 fig cakes, and she packed them on the donkey. And she said to her servants, go ahead, I will follow you shortly. But she didn't tell her husband Nabal what she was doing. And as she was riding her donkey into the mountain ravine, she saw David and his men coming towards her. Now this is where I like about Sister Abigail. Sister Abigail came in, you know, she had prepared some gifts, right? And so we know wives, as we are trying to get our husbands to see things our way, we can't go to them and, you know, tell them what to do, right? We got to go to them in love. And it wasn't just Sister Abigail, Sister, Ab Sister Abster did the same thing to the king. What did she say, Sister Corinne? She said, if it pleases the king, amen, bid me to come. Women of God, wives, we have to be careful how we entreat our husbands. We can get a whole lot of good stuff if we come with honey and not vinegar. 
So David had be, so David had just been saying a lot of good it did to help his fellow. A lot of good it did to help Nabal. We protected his flock in the wilderness. Nothing he owned was lost or stolen, but he has repaid me, repaid me evil for good. And David said, because remember, David was upset. He said, may God strike me and kill me if any one of his household is still alive tomorrow morning. So David was on a mission. He was going to kill everybody in Nabal's household. But old sister Abigail, with her good sense and her wisdom, she knew that she had to do something different. And when Abigail saw David, she quickly got off of her donkey. Remember, I just said, sisters, she quickly got off of her donkey and bowed low before him. She didn't get off her donkey and say, wait a minute, David, what are you trying to do to us? What are you trying to do? You can't come and kill my husband and my family. No, Sister Abigail had enough sense to get off her donkey and bow low before him. And this is what I love about Sister Abigail. She understood that repentance was on, repentance was on the way, that she had to use wisdom, that she had to praise, and that she had to worship. And Sister Abigail gonna get a name change here at the end of the story because of her wisdom. So here's Sister Abigail. She fell at his feet and said, I accept his repentance. I accept all blame in this matter, my Lord. Oh, did y'all hear that? Sister Abigail said, I accept all blame in this matter, my Lord. Please listen to what I have to say. So now she's got David's attention because she laid before him. She got down on her knees and she's got his attention. I know, here's what she said. I know Nabal is a wicked and ill-tempered man. Please don't pay him any attention. He is a fool, just as his name suggests. Abigail didn't name him Nabal, his mama did. And his name means fool. But I have never even saw your young man that was sent. So Abigail didn't even know that the men had been sent. And here's where it gets good. See, women of God, women of God, when you are married to an elder or a minister, it is our job to speak into his life, to encourage him through prayer. When the going gets tough, he's got to be able to reach over and say, baby, I don't know what I'm going to do. But what you have to do is get down like Abigail and tell him, listen, sir, we got this. The Lord will fight our battle for us. We are in this together. So here is what Sister Abigail said to David. Now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord lives and you, you yourself live, since the Lord has kept you from murdering and taken vengeance into your own hands, let all your enemies, those who try to harm you, be as cursed as Nabal is. And here is the present that I, your servant, has brought to you and your young men. Here it is, saints. Please forgive me if I have offended you in any way. The Lord surely will surely reward you with his lasting death dynasty. Now here's where she goes, where she begins to speak into David's life, who he is and who he is to become. She says, please forgive me if I have offended you in any way. The Lord will surely reward you with a lasting dynasty for you are fighting the Lord's battle and you have not done wrong throughout your entire life. And I can see David said, keep on talking, sister girl. I like what you said. I like you. Keep on talking. And even when you are chased by those who seek to kill you, your life is safe in the care of the Lord your God, secure in his treasure pouch. But the lives of your enemies will disappear like stones shot from a sling. Woo-wee. Can you imagine? Hey, Sister Abigail, how you know about the sling shot? How you know about that? I was just a boy when I did that. So she began to not only speak into his life where he was, she was 
speaking prophetically into his life where he was going to become. And when the Lord has done all he promised, he made you, he will make you a leader of Israel. Woo, my, my, my. I can see David going, yeah, girl. Yes, y'all here are talking to me. I need her. But guess what? Only problem, she got a husband. So don't let this be a blemish on your record because now she's trying to protect the call that's upon David's life. She don't want him to commit murder by mistake. She said, then your conscience won't have to bear the, the staring burdens of needless bloodshed and vengeance. And when the Lord has done these great things for you, please remember me, your servant. She wasn't asking David to become his wife. She said, remember me and your servant. Now, David began to listen to all of the stuff that Abigail was saying to him. And David replies and he says, praise the Lord. The God of Israel has sent you to meet me today. Thank God. Uh-oh, here we go. Thank God for your good sense. And that's wisdom. Bless you for keeping me from murder and from carrying out vengeance with my own hands. And he says, for I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept me from hurting you, that if you had not, you hear me when I say, if you had not hurried out to meet me, not one of Nabal's men would still be alive tomorrow morning. Now, Abigail, she repented, she had wisdom, she gave praise for who David was, she worshiped his call as who he was going to become. And as you can see in the text, it brought about a change that stopped her family from being killed. But the story gets better. When, Abra when Abigail arrived home, she found Nabal was throwing a big party and was celebrating like a king. Hmm, like a king. Now, the Bible said he was a fool. I didn't say he was a fool. The Bible said he was a fool. He was very drunk. So she didn't tell him about anything about her meeting with David until dawn the next day. See, you, it, see some of y'all ain't never been drunk. I've been drunk before. And so if you were talking to me and I was drunk, I probably wouldn't remember what you said. So there is wisdom showing up again. Abigail did not tell her husband what she had did for him. And in the morning, Nabal was sober and his wife told him what happened. And as a result, uh-oh, as a result, he had a stroke. Nabal had a stroke and he laid paralyzed on his bed like a stone. And 10 days later, the Lord uh -huh, struck him and he died. Did y'all hear what I said? The Lord struck Nabal and he died, not David. The Lord struck him. And when David heard, now, because Abigail, she, she, she repented, right? She had wisdom and she spoke into David's life. Remember, he was saying, keep on talking, sister. I like you. And she also said, remember me. Dave, when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, praise the Lord who has avenged the insult I received from Nabal. And he has kept me from doing it to myself. Nabal has received punishment for his sins. And then David, uh-huh, he remembered Abigail. Because see, I need her on my team. She gonna help me. She gonna help me. David sent his messenger to Abigail to ask her to become his wife. See, wisdom, beloveds, wisdom, wisdom, a sanctified life, a prayer life brought Abigail a new name. She became a new wife. Amen. And when the messengers arrived at Carmel, they told Abigail, David has sent us to take you back to marry him. Uh oh, here she go again, beloveds. She bowed low to the ground. She worshiped. She bowed low to the ground and responded, I, your servant, would be happy to marry David. 
I would even be willing to become a slave washing the feet of his servants. And quickly, quickly, did you hear what I said? Quickly, she took along five of her servant girls in attendance and mounted her donkey and went with David's master, messengers. And so she became his wife, amen? And even as we, I am talking about it from a female's perspective, we know David. We know that David, although he was a mighty warrior, that he loved the Lord, he committed sin. And so that takes us to Psalms 51. That whole entire book of the word talks about creating in him a clean heart. But before he did that, what did David do? He repented, right? He repented. He used wisdom. He praised God for who God was and what he was doing in his life. But he worshiped him for who he is, the God of our salvation. So beloveds, I will relinquish my time now. And I hope that, that these words were encouraging to you. But I will say to you, as we continue down in this walk with one another as elders and ministers, we have to make sure that we are repenting every day for things that you know about, things that you don't know about. I repent for things that, Lord forgive me for things I might do, I don't even know about. Let's have a repentant heart and make sure that we use wisdom. We know that Superintendent Simpkins and Lady Simpkins, they are our leaders, but you gotta make sure that your actions use wisdom because what you say, beloved, impact them as your leaders. Use wisdom, seek it, and God will give it to you freely. And remember to praise God for what he's done and to worship him for who he is. I pray this word was an encouragement for you on this afternoon. I thank God for the opportunity. Uh, Missionary Burnett, thank you, Pastor Lady Simpkins. I love each and every one of you, my Solid Rock family. Thank you for praying for me. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody. Let's unmute and let's give God a hand for that powerful, wonderful word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Word, a word, a word, a word. God, what a word. Amen. Even deacon's wives. Amen. That's me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's be wise. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to be wise, ladies. Amen. Amen. Like you said, we have to be Jesus. Honey, amen. If we want to get our husbands, wonderful words. Amen. Wonderful words. Amen. So at this time, amen. At this time, we are going to turn it over to our pastor. Amen. And he can give the closing remarks and prayer. And we just praise God. We're praying this week for elders and ministers' wives. Amen. Because they do need our prayers because I know Deaconess Shalice Williams praise God thank you for accepting our invitation and I know you need prayer because Elder Williams will be all <laughs> over the place amen I know you need our prayers amen that is one hard working elder amen I see him everywhere doing everything because we know we have a busy 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 wonderful bishop amen so I, so I can understand, amen, that you definitely uh, need prayer, amen, and strength, because Elder Williams is an awesome, awesome man of God who stands by his bishop, amen, and our pastor, amen. God bless you, pastors, in your hands. Well, let me just first say, I, you know, I'm, I'm giving honor to everybody. I'm giving all y'all honor. I'm throwing a bucket of honor at you. Just honor, honor, honor. Listen, <laughs> Ooh, Missionary Williams, that was absolutely awesome. That was a tremendous word. Uh, you exegeted that scripture so powerfully. You made that story clear. You brought, you put, uh, you brought that black and white story to color, full color. That was, that was, that was powerful. Amen. And uh, thank you so very, very much for making it clear about what is absolutely necessary. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, we cannot make it without our wives. And a good wife, glory to God, is better than all the gold in the world. You know, I'm just trying to tell you 
and you have a solid wife who is uh, who is understanding and who is encouraging. And, uh, you know, uh, I say this often in that uh, it takes a strong and wise man to deal with, with a strong and wise woman. Glory to God, because they have things to say. And if you're an insecure guy, it's going to be difficult for you. You're going to be looking for your third or fourth or fifth or sixth wife. Right. But if you. <laughs> If you, you've got to learn how to appreciate what the gift that God has given. Appreciate your favor. Glory to God, because the Bible says that man that finds a wife finds, uh, finds favor, uh, excuse me, finds a good wife. Glory to God, obtains favor with God. And, and, and I need to tell you, uh, Elder Williams has found favor. Ain't no doubt about it. Ain't no doubt about it. Glory to God. Uh, he has found favor. Uh, she is an absolute, not only is she is extremely smart and intelligent and wise, but she's helpful. She's a giving daughter, uh, missionary. She's a fantastic, glory to God, individual, always looking out for people uh, and has been all, the, all this time, always. This is not something new for her. This is what's in her. God has really put that in the two of them and what a tremendous team they are. And so, uh, you know, I want to thank God for you and thank you for that word uh, about Abigail. Glory to God. Uh, I, we absolutely enjoyed that. Thank you, Elder Williams, for having her come on. Glory to God. And uh, amen. And uh, sharing, just standing there supporting your wife. Glory to God. Another thing that happens with men, glory to God, sometimes they can't handle the success of their wives. Glory to God. So thank you. My brother. I'm just telling y'all the truth. Glory to God. So thank you again, uh, daughter, uh, daughter, missionary Shalice Williams. Amen. We appreciate it. Thank you to our, uh, our president of the uh, prayer team, our president. Glory to God. <laughs> our president. God bless you, Deacon uh, Burnett. My wife was right for it. That brother can pray. I'll be I, I wonder how he can remember all the stuff with all those people and then, you know, go through the names and all that. That's an anointing. That's 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 God breathed. And uh, God bless you, sir. We are so godly proud of you. Thank you to Missionary Burnett, who is who just is sister everything. She works in everywhere. Glory to God. Give her a mic. She'll sing. Give her some drumsticks. She'll play. Give her glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> as Zoom, she'll host a prayer meeting. Glory to God. She's that sister everywhere. So we praise God for her. And for all of you all, uh, you know I got to honor my wife. She is an absolutely tremendously faithful and uh, supportive woman of God uh, with all that I'm involved in and, and, and continue to do. Glory to God. And she's taken on additional ministries herself where she facilitates, a, you know, um, um, uh, non-denominational kind of a Bible study every week. Uh, glory to God has been doing that for several years. She didn't talk about it, but there are people who she has been able to minister to, glory to God, that uh, you all might never see, but she's ministering to them all, every week. Many of them are older and they're in the house, glory to God, and she's just going through the Bible studies and helping them to, to stay, to sustain their the spiritual growth. So I want to thank God for my wife and all of that while supporting her husband who keeps coming up with other stuff to do. Uh, so we appreciate that. And to all of you all online, I can't see everybody's uh, picture or face, glory to God, but I do want to say thank you to each one of you, glory to God, uh, for being on this line. I know you have been blessed. There's no doubt in my mind, glory to God. And so I'm so grateful to you all. Let me turn it back. Uh, am I turning it back into your hands, uh, Leaders, or am I closing out? Amen, amen. We just thank God for our pastor, First Lady, being on. Amen.